For more on the photo scandal and the international probe into the Manchester terror attack, we turn to our Washington, D.C. studio and bring in John Sinalides. He's a global risk analyst. And, John, let's start with the um, photos that were given from British intelligence to the United States. Is it irresponsible for U.S. intelligence to give these to the media? David, it's beyond irresponsible. It's disgraceful, it's outrageous, and it's unacceptable. And I think it's about time that Americans, especially those in sensitive positions of government service, actually be punished with many years in jail as the law directs when they're leaking sensitive classified information across the board, not just with this particular atrocity in Manchester, but in general. We've made it far too easy for Americans in government to leak classified sensitive information with near impunity. And maybe one tiny silver lining out of this atrocity in Manchester is beginning to turn around this process and bringing law enforcement in and trying to stop these leaks once and for all. Now, John, to your point, there have certainly been a lot of U.S. Uh, leaks. Now, the thing with leaks is that they're usually put out for a reason. The ones that we've seen around the Trump administration, they clearly have an agenda to try and discredit the president. But what could be the motivation or the agenda behind these leaks? I really hate to think about what it is that's driving people to conduct this kind of illegal and, again, uh, a, a outrageous behavior. But I'm afraid a lot of this is simply currying favor with reporters. Uh, these are the kinds of people who are leaking documents all the time here in Washington. I can't really speak for other capitals. And what they do more than anything else is either try to pursue a particular agenda, whether it's policy or whether it's partisan, or in this case, I can't imagine it's anything more than trying to curry favor with journalists, get them information so say the New York Times can break the story or release photos that nobody else has, and then collect chits from those journalists when there are times to drive a policy or partisan agenda down the road. That's a good point, but is it really fair to compare these leaks to the Trump leaks? I mean, after all, it was already widely reported based on British intelligence officials that this was a sophisticated bomb that had metal nuts and screws, that it involved a backpack, and that's what these photos show. And obviously, it's insensitive to the victims, but to suggest that maybe this damages intelligence when that intelligence was out there, a lot of people may not understand that. That may be the case, David, but I will defer to British authorities on this, and it seems to me they are rightly incensed. It may not be the actual content of the information here that was released. You're right, there's a sensitivity to the victims and their families, especially those whose names of beloved ones who have now departed this life uh, were not made public uh, until uh, the Americans began to leak this information. But there's a larger issue here that plays into long-term counterintelligence and national security, or in this case, international security. And and that's trust. There must be a foundation of trust between intelligence officials, of allies and partners. When that trust is shattered, as we saw in this particular case, it's very difficult for the British Prime Minister to be able to tell her people that they can trust the Americans when the Americans take information and in a matter of hours release it for no apparent purpose, nothing is advanced, and in fact, it may have actually hindered the ability of British authorities and Interpol and other law enforcement authorities to pursue every single lead possible in trying to crack down on the network that led to this terrorist bombing. So, John, do you think that this could have uh, an adverse impact on the so-called Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance? I hope not. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think we see the kind of compromising here of intel sources or betraying of actual moles inside of Islamic State or other organizations where lives are being threatened. But again, I think this just lends to an environment where it's less and less cooperative, less and less trusting between people who really are putting the highest of stakes on the table when they're coordinating information and ultimately trying to protect their societies against the kind of savagery that we saw in Manchester, that we've seen elsewhere in Europe, that we see in the United States, and that only seems to be picking up pace over the last eight to ten years. John, before we go, we want to get your take on the investigation itself and also, of course, the effort in Great Britain to prepare people for perhaps the next attack. What do you make of where the investigation is headed and also the British Prime Minister's decision to raise the terror level there? I don't have any additional insight into what led to that decision, David. 
But I can say this, and I think it's very important not only for the citizens of the United Kingdom, but really for most European nations, and, and the French especially have been hit very, very hard the last year and a half. What, what the citizen we must learn to support, and there's probably a lesson here for we Americans also, is that for law enforcement to be able to be effective against Islamist terrorism and the networks that breed them from around the world, there must be a relentless campaign. You cannot relent against these types of savages, these kinds of barbarians. And we have to pursue individuals, we have to pursue networks, we have to pursue organizations, we have to pursue financing. And we ultimately need the help of Muslims in our respective countries who know about these types of extremists, like we saw in the Manchester case, where you had family members and friends who reported to British police and the question ultimately becomes why didn't British police do something more seriously to try to fence this individual in find out who he's talking to keep better track of his travels to Libya and then to Saudi Arabia or other countries that they may have traveled to and so it must be relentless it must be effective but there must be accountability so when people are making these kinds of mistakes that cost 22 lives and dozens of injuries they're removed from their positions of responsibility and people who can do the job more more effectively are brought in so that we don't have this and a series of mourning and candlelight vigils and whatnot. Instead, mm -hmm. we're protecting our citizens and our societies. All right. John Sidalides, thank you so much.